What's up guys, it's Matt Collins Jones here, also known as the D365 Geek, and today we are talking about Power Automate and the Microsoft 365 Outlook Connector, and we're going to look at the action, which is Find Meeting Times V2. So the Find Meeting Times V2 action allows you to pass in some information, and what it'll do is it'll search through Exchange and try and suggest and come up with meeting times for a prospective meeting that you've got coming up. So if you open up Outlook and you go to send a meeting request to someone, you do have that little scheduling assistant. This is the scheduling assistant, but in a programmatic way that we can call through Power Automate. So let's take a look. So I'm in Power Automate here. Uh, I've got my flow here, and I'm just triggering this via manual trigger at the moment. I can click New Step, and then I can say the Microsoft 365 Outlook Connector. I can scroll down until I find the Find Meeting Times V2. So we get a lot of uh, information in here, a lot of like, parameters that we can fill in. So we have required attendees, optional attendees, resource attendees, meeting duration, so how long it's going to last for. You start and your end time. If I click on Show Advanced Options, I have uh, the maximum number of candidates, so the maximum number of meeting suggestions to return in the response. Um, the minimum attendee percentage, so the minimum required confidence for a time slot to be returned in a response, so uh, the confidence of the team 0 and 100 as a percentage. So we could say, right, I only want you to return times that are above 50% confident. Um, is the organizer optional, uh, true or false? So this is default into false, so the organizer has to be, uh, again, uh, required as part of it. And we also have activity domain, so this is like what the what the type of appointment is. So um, in this instance, it's going to be work, so it's going to look through my working hours. So if we go up to the top and we put a couple of bits in here, so uh, in the required attendees, I'm going to paste in my, uh, my details there. Um, and in the optional attendees, I'm going to paste in my details, but I'm going to remove it and put in one of my um, colleagues. So what this is going to do is this is going to search my availability and my colleagues' availability and then we're going to um, it's going to look for uh, when we can do this. So I'm going to put in meeting duration of 30 minutes and then the start and the end times I'm going to put it uh, a little bit in the future. So what we're going to do is we're going to add an expression and we're going to add some days on. So we're going to say add uh, days open bracket, uh, UTC now, and then we're going to add uh, two days on for the start date. I'm currently doing this on a Sunday, so it's uh, it's not going to find anything on a Sunday, unfortunately, because it's not during my working week. Uh, the end time, again, I'm going to add another expression, I'm going to add some days, uh, and I'm going to say, right, okay, I'm going to add UTC now, uh, but the end time is going to be any time within the next sort of like six days. So I just need to find a find a time between the start date and the end date um, of 30 minutes um, uh, to, to suggest a meeting. So it says meeting duration 30 minutes. So it's going to be the start date of when we start looking for a for a, a gap in the in the calendar, and a end date of when we're going to stop looking for a gap in the calendar, like when we need to have this meeting by. Um, I'm not going to set any of these other things at the moment, so max number of meeting responses, I'm not going to set those. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a compose action after this. So, compose. And there I'll look at some of the dynamic content. So we have quite a lot of dynamic content come back, um, and there's varying ones. This, uh, I understand most of them. Uh, I don't think I understand all of them, um, but I'm still, still looking into them. Um, so we have things like... Um, uh, meeting times uh, organizer availability so return how available the organizer of this meeting is so the person triggering the flow or the person who's calendar we're looking in first uh, we have stuff about the time zones so like you know finding the right time zone especially if you work with an international business what time zone is going to be the best time zone um, the meeting suggestion confidence so how confident are is the is the um, action that the time is going to be available for both people. So you should have people that block their time out in sort of tentative or like, you know, busy or not busy. And uh, it's going to look all these all these things in the calendars and say, do you know what, I think this is going to be the best time. I'm about 80% confident about it. Uh, we have the uh, suggested time, so meeting time suggestions item. Uh, we have the body, which is just the whole content, locations and stuff like that. So suggestions is what I'm going to go for. So meeting time suggestions, and I'll put that in there. 
um, and that's going to give me a meeting time suggestion. Um, so if I just test this out quickly, just to show you what this does. So put that in and we see how it will come out. Done. Uh, this is the part where I was done right. Yeah, there we go. So in the suggestions, we get this, uh, this sort of JSON uh, body um, and it's telling me the confidence is 100. Um, and then it says the organizer availability is free, so that's fine. And then it's going to um, it's going to look up the availability of the attendees. So uh, Andrew Wolf again, it's going to find that, um, and it's going to uh, give me uh, it's going to tell me the start date and start time. So it's suggesting we do this on the 29th of July between 3:30 and 4 o'clock. It's saying there's a hundred percent confidence that both me and my colleague are available at that point. So we can use that later on. And then it's giving me uh, another one. So again, it's, it's looking up the availability and it's saying, uh, okay, we could also do this um, between three and 4.30 on the 28th as well. Um, and it's giving me another one. It says we can actually do this between three and 4 on the, on the 31st. So it, it gives you a number of responses and it, it tries to suggest when would be the best time to do this. So it, it can give you these responses um, and it can give you the confidence of them. And you can actually use these to then sort of like, right, okay, let's take the, the top response or the or, you know, the only one that comes back is 100% confident and let's schedule a meeting using that time. So we could, we could use, um, we could pause this and we could get an item out of it and we could go, right, okay, we're going to take the, the start time we're going to put that in, we're going to take the end time, we're going to put that in, we're going to put the duration in, we're going to specify the time zone, and we're going to create a calendar event automatically based on their availability. So what you could do is, like, if you know you need to schedule a meeting with, um, with, with a bunch of people, you could just um, like put this in uh, and just say, right, okay, trigger the flow, I want to trigger it uh, with these people, I want to create a meeting that's 30 minutes long, um, and we, we're just going to schedule it. Um, so you could do it this way, or you could do it programmatically, like, if you start a project and you have a project team and you need to schedule some like you know calls like kick off the project or like you know fill out certain documentation with everyone you could trigger a flow based on the people in that project get their email addresses put them into this find a time sometime in the next week um, and suggest a time then automatically create an email based uh, a calendar event based on that so this is really, really powerful, being able to like programmatically pull this detail, pull this detail out and be able to use this to create calendar events uh, for when people are available in the future. So what do you guys think? Is this something that you use at the moment? Is it something you knew existed? Um, what use cases have you done for it? Uh, well, I can think of a bunch for me, uh, just like scheduling meetings when I start a new project. I need everyone in the project involved to like start things off and it's such a pain to go into my outlook and then find all these people and then hit the scheduling button and do all that if i could just like when new project lands when it comes gets assigned to me I have a flow automatically trigger and just send that email out with the first available time of everyone that would be better and that's what power automate is it's all about automation all about making your life easier but what do you guys use it for let me know down below if you found this video useful if you could share and like it with your friends uh, or the way around if you'd like it and then share it with your friends uh, that would be much appreciated, um, and I hope you hope you enjoyed this. Uh, if you've not hit that button, hit that subscribe button and subscribe to all the latest videos, and I'll see you next time.